Hello everyone, I am Dr. Pranadeep Reddy. Welcome to Urogynecology for Beginners. We have already taught about two spaces in the pelvis and today we are going for the third space that is the retropubic space or, and today along with me we have Dr. Diksha Pandey. Thank you Pranadeep, <laughs> thank you so much for and, this opportunity. <laughs> and Dr. Ala Monica. Thank you so much pelvis. sir. <laughs> and uh, the, the space we are mm -hmm. talking about today is um, a retropubic space or space of ridges. So uh, questions I will ask. <laughs> you yes. cannot ask me questions. <laughs> so Pranthip has done the introduction part very good. But I will be the one who will be going to uh, ask questions yes. because that is the best thing Always. to do. <laughs> okay, so as Pranthip said that today is the third space in pelvic anatomy and the space is? Space of ridges. Retropubic space. So again controversy. Some people are saying it is retropubic space. Some say that it is space of redzius. And I say it is free vesicle space. All three of us mean the same thing. We are talking about the same thing. A space which is very, very useful and very amazing. It is a narrow margin of safety. But the safety in that boundary is too good because of many reasons. So what are the important, uh, before we go into the advantages or the good things about this space, um, Prandeep, can you describe what is actually this space? Can you uh, show in this pelvis what yes, is this space? So I'm going to explain the anatomy of uh, retropubic space in our MIA model. You can see here, this is the symphysis pubis on both sides and you can see posteriorly the bladder. This retropubic space is the space between the symphysis pubis here and between the bladder on either side of the urethra. And if you go with the right side, uh, uh, retropubic space or space of ridges, here we can see uh, the lateral side. In this space, on the lateral side, the femoral artery, which is a continuation of uh, uh, external iliac artery, will run through this area. And on the media, sometimes even aberrant uh, obturator artery also runs in this area. Otherwise, this is a, a vascular area. Uh, Monica, what, do you, what is the other importance of uh, uh, this space? Sir, so this is a very nice space. Because it is extra peritoneal space, sir. Yeah. For the uh, surgeries and all, being extra peritoneal space, yeah. there is a yes. good safety match. Yes, that is correct. And uh, they, uh, when we are doing procedures in this space, there is no need to enter into the peritoneum. And also, it is an avascular space. That is the reason uh, this space is uh, better safety. And uh, as long as you are within the space, uh, there is very little chance of complications in this area. We are, we are saying multiple times safety because many surgeons feel that. Uh, it is, uh, uh, it is dangerous and it is uh, highly vascular, but no, this is not the only venous plexus are there, not any uh, arterial blood supply in this one. Yes. So very nicely as Dr. Prandeep and Dr. Monica has explained, two points you must keep in mind. So two keywords they told, first is that it is an avascular space. space and second thing she told that it is an extra peritoneal space. space. These are the two words which we use when we describe retropubic space or space of red seas. Now, Prandeep picked up a very important point that in general medical fraternity, there is a feeling that retropubic space means it is a scary space you cannot do. But let me tell you this thing that if you remain, if you follow perfect step-by-step -step procedure, it is a very beautiful and maybe the safest zone in the entire pelvis according to me. Yes, the idea, the thing is that it is a very narrow space. So, what are the relations? Again, we'll repeat. This is retropubic space means the space that lies immediately behind, just behind the pubic symphysis. And it is narrow anterior to posterior also because within few millimeters or maybe a centimeter or two, there is bladder yeah. and urethra. So anteriorly pubic symphysis, posteriorly bladder yeah. and urethra and on two sides if you go laterally. So there are major That's blood vessels, major. external so iliac vessel getting converted into femoral. You know that femoral vessel is very important and very dangerous vessel. So the margin of safety is very low but within that small space we are at an avascular space and we are also at an extra peritoneal space. 
what is the importance before uh, going into further discussion of anatomy why i am saying again and again extra peritoneal and he also mentioned extra peritoneal right. pradeep what is the advantage of being extra peritoneal in this space uh, we can we can safely insert the, our instrument and prevent uh, any peritonitis or any infection yes. peritoneal entry so peritoneum is we say it is pandora's box if you enter there there are major blood vessels there are major organs, organs. and moreover if anything leaks there there is chance of peritonitis which might go into the entire peritoneal yes. cavity and can lead to sepsis when we are working on extra peritoneal um, spaces and we are in a safer yes. zone so important for retropubic space specifically why extra peritoneal word is important because can would you like to tell why extra peritoneal space is important yes, uh, yes ma'am i would like to tell ki any procedure we do in this space has a risk of little injury to bladder or urethra but even if that occurs it is extra peritoneal so there is no risk of peritonitis or bubble injury if there is no sepsis. risk of peritonitis. peritonitis because of urinary spillage and the irritation of peritoneal cavity because of urethra because we are outside the peritoneum the other reason the Uh, urine if it comes there in peritoneum it will keep on accumulating this is a high pressure zone narrow zone so little uh, urine will collect after that it will seal tamponade okay. effect tamponade effect will be there and whatever urine is there it will get absorbed in the lymphatic Extra or venous peritone. system in some time so there is no chance of missing a big leak mm. and the other chance there is no chance of chemical peritonitis which might be caused because of leak of ur urinary uh, urine if it occurs inside the peritoneum want, the next question from you is about the procedure we do in this space what are those procedures monica one procedure tvtr what is the another procedure from abdominal side we will do birth suspension. suspension so vaginally from the vaginal side we will do tvtr hmm. and from the abdominal side we will do birth call suspension okay. so tvtr tvtr is tension free vaginal tape by retropubic Rick approach yes. and let me because we were having prandeep a few uh, uh, days ago the discussion that it has been the meshes has have been banned right. by fda so i will take this opportunity to tell you this then yes. when fda Day, all this galata happened when all this bans happened that happened for the vaginal meshes used for prolapse it was not there for two kinds of meshes one is for mid urethral slings either by obturator approach or retropubic okay. approach and the other one of sacro colpopexy or sacro hystropexy meshes that yeah. are not this is long discussion why it was like this how it happened what happened after the ban so there is Actually, a whole yeah, lot of story we can maybe do a podcast on that yes. someday but the important thing which i want to emphasize here is that these meshes you don't think that i don't want to see this because these are banned by uh, usfda it's not so they are these are very much um in uh, fashion procedures and if you see the guidelines following 2018 and now all literature and all our guidelines are coming which are favoring tvtr over tvto or tot so uh, watch this procedure watch the anatomy carefully because uh, you might have to use it some day you would like to learn this procedure is such a good procedure so tvtr one of you tell i'll finish here uh, my part by saying that birch call for suspension birch call for suspension is an abdominal Abdom. procedure it can be done either by open Lepros method or, or laparoscopic method yeah. as we have discussed in our first video on white but line but if you go for laparoscopy the then we have to go and train to the peritoneum Peritone. but we are doing uh, abdominal laparotomy then uh, there is no need to enter into the uh, okay. peritoneum so extra same peritoneum thing, i think both of you will show now tvt procedure yeah. have you got your trocar also yes ma'am okay she has got a trocar also yes. i think so you will explain both the procedures yes. i think um, that is much needed thank you so much ma'am on behalf of our uh, viewers also because i want uh, uh, some of my colleagues has asked the same question and uh, uh, thankful to you for explaining that very nicely that uh, the tvtr uh, is not banned so they uh, please note that tvtr is not banned by fda anyone Uh, and this is the best procedure uh, you can give for an SUI. After the FDA part, let me explain the procedure of TVTR. Uh, for the TVTR over the abdomen, in the mid, uh, from you draw a line from uh, umbilicus to the symphysis pubis, and put three fingers over the line, 
and what you have to do is you have to give an incision stab incision a deep stab uh, on either side of your three fingers and then from the vaginal end we will give one centimeter incision uh, on the urethra at one centimeter below uh, below the external urethral matrix and then make a tunnel of one centimeter on either side inside then you use the uh, trocar which is attached with the tape tvtr tape then go inside and pierce the pubo urethral fascia once you pierce the pubo urethral fascia the resistance will be there won't be any resistance you can freely uh, push and at the same time the bladder is pushed to the opposite side contral side using bladder manipulator which is a blunt uh, metal uh, catheter metal uh, metal rod and then you go forward and then come from the incision which you have given on the over the abdominal wall and you can see the uh, tip is coming here repeat on the other side other procedure which we will do in this retropubic space is birch calpo suspension monica can you explain that to the, our viewers yes sir after your amazing demonstration of tvtr now it's my turn i guess yeah. uh, so uh, this you. birch calpo suspension can be done abdominally or laparoscopically as we already mentioned multiple times the two difference in this procedure is while approaching laparoscopically we have to enter the peritoneum and while in abdominal approach la, uh, peritoneum is not entered yes after we have dissected the space as we reach here now an assistant from below vaginal end will lift the vaginal tissue near the bladder neck here dr prandeep sir is doing that for me thank you sir <laughs> you are welcome <laughs> we will take two bites on each, each side one from the paravaginal tissue elevated and one near the pectineal line here and we will tie it loosely so there will be four sutures in total two on right side and two on left side this is an age old procedure done for sui so congratulations kids you <laughs> did a very good job thank you, thank you so i will just uh, enlist what all they said retropubic space we are discussing today which is a narrow space behind the pubic symphysis behind that space is bladder and urethra on sides external. there are external, external iliac, iliac vessels, vessels which are continuing into femoral vessels. vessels so this area if you are limited in this area we said that it is a very good space safety wise and also it has one more advantage that it is an extra peritoneal space they told about two procedures which are commonly done in sui which is a such a common problem that every third lady we say uh, in her reproductive years and beyond with suffering with sui it is a blessing this procedure is a blessing for her you can do it with an age old procedure like birch calpo suspension abdominally or laparoscopically or in a better way an easy minimally invasive procedure is tvtr so tension free vaginal tape by retropubic okay. approach as many times uh, we have mentioned that these meshes are not banned by fda then you can safely do it so monica you were asking one thing ma'am you said the space is very space uh, very safe and we can use it for tvtr and all so ma'am as a uh, new uh, urogynecologist new beginner, <laughs> beginner urogynecologist I am scared, ma'am. What if I rupture something? What if I injure urethra or bladder, ma'am? This is a, a very good question, and maybe the same question is coming to your minds also. That what if we are so close? He showed how close we are to bladder. We'll deflect. Everything is okay. But by chance, if the this needle, this scary needle, if it perforates the bladder, then what next? So first. this is actually the reason it is not that this question is coming to your mind only it came to the Never scientist in 1990s also they thought about it that's why they thought that they will uh, make a safer procedure which is called tot where you are not going just next to the urethra but you are going more uh, laterally natural. laterally and coming out through the obturator foramen but let me tell you one thing bladder perforation sometime in your life can happen and the incidence is if you are doing 1000 procedure you are likely to injure five bladder first thing the incidence is low second thing even if that happens in my hundred has happened so let me tell you this so even if bladder perforation happen don't get panicky see this uh, um, needle if it perforates the amount of the damage. injury or damage is very very yeah. less it is like yeah. suprapubic catheterization yes. you don't have to repair it you don't have to do anything only thing that you must do is after every procedure 
every TVTR procedure, we must do a cystoscopy. cystoscopy. And cystoscopy we should do when the needle are inside. inside. We should not have pulled them out because then it is easy to see. So, if you see by chance that this needle, which usually is covered with a, a blue colored polythene, polythene sheet, if it perforates, what you have to do? You have to gently pull it out. Once you pull it out, don't panic, okay? And there are two ways on cystoscopy how you should suspect that you have perforated bladder. First thing, as soon as you start cystoscopy, if you see blood there, that means maybe there is a perforation. Second thing is you will see that blue sheet uh, reflecting onto one of the balls. Don't panic. Again and again, I'm telling you, just pull it out. Put it again and go little laterally. This time, little laterally, you not too much laterally, maybe a few millimeters laterally. This time, tell your assistant, scold the assistant to deflect the bladder even better and go and put the tape. You don't have to abandon the procedure. You don't have to suture the incision. You don't have to open the abdomen, nothing. Just recognition of that bladder puff. Remember, it is a small, it is like one puncture in the bladder. Maybe 3 to 4 help. mm less than Yes, half. you 2 mm maybe. Mm. The only thing you have to remember in post-op period, 3 to 5 days you put the catheter in situ so that bladder takes rest and heals on its own. So that's what, I hope I answered your question. Yes. Okay. I, I think you answered many, uh, many uh, yes. RBO's questions. Yes. Okay. One more thing, which is my <laughs> doubt actually. So usually when I assist students this thing and this thought is too much in the mind that there is risk of bladder perforation and urethral injury and um, what they tend to do, they tend to go laterally without realizing because maybe they have not been enforced with this thought that laterally are major blood vessels. Yes. So what they told and their hands are not that well adjusted because they are trying to prevent that urethra and bladder injury, they tend to point it towards yeah. lateral yeah. mode. So that you have to be more specific according to me because bladder puff, no problem. You can leave it, yes. put the catheter and leave the patient. But if you damage the femoral artery and if yeah. you damage the uh, external yeah. eyelid yeah. vessel, yeah. then you are in trouble. So, remain medially just next to the bladder and urethra and better that push the bladder urethra. You should have an eye on your assistant also. It is more important to have an eye on that, that the bladder, the catheter that uh, guide what Prandeep was telling, a blunt stick or manipulator that should be put properly inside and bladder should be properly deflected to the other side. So, if you keep all these things in mind, TVT is beautiful. I think we love TVTR and um, it is a very good procedure and gets and over. One in more point I just want yes, to emphasize. Tell me, no? Even if there is even if you are in the right space and there can be small vessels, even if they bleed, they are not from the arteries, they are from the veins, and that yes. bleeding will stop because of the tamponade effect and it won't go inside the abdominal cavity because it is extra peritoneal. Yes. So no need to worry about that also. Ha. Some so people are worried about hematoma. Have, if you have not injured arteries mm -hmm. and especially when you are doing, doing open birch, the way you are entering mm -hmm. outside the peritoneum, there are chances that you might encounter these venous plexuses which start oozing. So you don't have to worry. When you tie your sutures mm -hmm. or birch corpus suspension actually, that will take care of these bleeding yeah. vessels also. Yeah. And as Prandeep said, it has a good tamponade effect. Okay. So you don't have to worry too much about it or forming hematoma. Rare reports of hematoma formation with injuring the vessels are reported in literature. But I don't want to scare you more. So remember, if you remain in the narrow space, it is a very, very beautiful and safe space to work on. I think with this, we finish this third session today. I hope you liked it and you learned something new. So stay tuned and don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you. much.